So our environments are absolutely chock a block with signals. So we've got all sorts of sensory signals, things to hear, things to see, things that are touching us. And there's so much sensory information in our environments that we couldn't possibly be able to process it all and still function. We'd, still, we'd be so overwhelmed. So what our brain does is it, it filters out all of the extraneous information, anything that's not necessary. So I, you know, just at this moment, I thought about traffic noise and I heard a car outside my apartment, but I didn't hear that noise until I thought about it or the feel of the chair under my, underneath me. You know, all of those sensations are unnecessary to me, so my brain is filtering them out. But at the same time, for example, this sort of filtering process allows you to prioritise a noise like a child crying so that you can hear that noise above all of the less important noises. So filtering is there to allow us to focus on things to keep us safe and so that we won't become overwhelmed by all the sensory information. The third process I want to talk to you about is just um, bodily noise. So what I've said is that we've got all of this kind of external noise in our environment that's available to be heard and seen and felt but we don't hear or, or see or feel it. We've got just as much internal noise. So all day long your body is changing. If I stand up my heart rate goes up. If I eat some food my bowels start moving. So I've got all of these kind of changes happening in my body but I've spent a lifetime learning to ignore those changes and to know that those are normal things that happen to me. Um, so I absolutely don't notice them and nobody notices them. But they're going to be important in a moment when I talk about how we develop psychosomatic illness. So these are the unconscious processes that keep us safe, that make us efficient and help us make sense of a confusing world. But there's two important things about them. And one is that they're unconsciously generated. And the second is that they are absolutely fallible. So like everything in our bodies, they go wrong. So a person, you know, hair, you can have too much hair, you can have too little hair. So similarly, these sort of unconscious processes designed to keep us safe, they go wrong sometimes. So, you know, we're, basic, we're, we're judging the world according to predictions, but our predictions could be wrong. Or perhaps we're filtering out the, right, the wrong things and we're failing to filter out the things that we should be filtering out. And that can alter our experience of our bodies and our experience of the world. And two particular things really disrupt these unconscious processes. And those two things are firstly, attention, and secondly, expectations. So let's talk about attention for a second. So anything that draws your attention to your body will affect that filtering process. So all of, those, all of that bodily white noise that I talked about is available for you to notice. And if for some reason you're given... Um, reason to search your body for symptoms, you will start noticing it. And the minute you notice it, if you judge it to be abnormal, it becomes a symptom. And when it's, once you call it a symptom, you're on a hunt for disease. So for example, you know, COVID is a good example. If I were not vaccinated, and if I was in a room with someone who I later learned to have COVID, you know, it would be automatic that I would start looking for evidence that I had a high temperature, searching my body for evidence of shortness of breath or change in smell. And once you start searching for symptoms, you find them. Similarly, if I'd injured a limb, that might direct my attention to my limb and might start making me notice sensations in my limb that I never noticed before. So attention changes how your body feels, but it also changes the mechanics of movement. It also changes how you move. So for example, most of us walk, if you've never had a difficulty walking, you just walk without thinking about it. It's just something we do because we've learned how to do it and it's embedded in our muscle memories.